Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, and I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And, hey, we are 10,000 subscribers away from 1 million. I just want to say I appreciate every single one of y'all that's been rocking with me. But for this video, we're going to be speaking on Big Mike, the man that snitched on King Vaughn. Big Mike, an old block original and the older brother of Wooski. Big Mike's name would be cemented in Chicago drill history and made infamous by one of Chicago's most notorious legends, King Vaughn. The self-proclaimed demon, whose name is now associated with being a serial killer, was only 19 years old when he was officially charged with murder. May 29th, 2014. In Chicago's Inglewood neighborhood, there was a birthday party for 20-year-old LaVon Everhart, who was more commonly known as CJ. King Vaughn was in attendance, as Vaughn and CJ were both from Killerwood and could be seen in multiple pictures together. According to a witness statement by Lamenda Jones, CJ's mother, she tells Chicago detectives she saw Vaughn standing near the front gate of her house, looking at three guys on her porch like something wasn't right. She told him, don't start no mess in my house, meaning don't start gang banging at her house, because she knew Vaughn was a member of a gang and the people on the porch were members of different gangs. She told the detective King Vaughn smiled as he replied, I'm not on that. As CJ's mom went back inside, Vaughn would leave the party. CJ's mom was cooking for about 15 minutes before gunfire erupted. Making her way outside, she observed a young man who'd been shot in the head laying face down in the grass. She saw another man crawling across the street, bleeding everywhere. Paramedics arrived on scene at 6.15 p.m., finding the man who'd been crawling with a gunshot to his face and another gunshot to his leg. He was identified by police as Marquise Carpenter, a gangster disciple from Jaro City who was transported to Stroger Hospital from the scene. A second victim, Timothy Robinson, was shot in the foot and able to transport himself to St. Bernard Hospital. The third victim, identified as 19-year-old Malcolm Stuckey, was pronounced dead at the scene. His body laid face down in the grass, and an autopsy would report a 40 caliber bullet was fired into his right ear, traveling through his neck before exiting two inches below his left ear. Another bullet would enter his back thigh and two more into his buttocks. Multiple 40 caliber shell casings would be left at the scene, along with a 9mm handgun loaded with 10 rounds. July 30th, three weeks after the party, Chicago Police Tactical Team would take Big Mike into custody within Parkway Gardens, aka O Block. He'd be transported to the area central office and placed inside of an interview room. Waiving his rights, Big Mike was shown a witness statement and denied any participation at the party. But as time went on, Big Mike would tell a crazy story to detectives. Jasma Mitchell called Mike, saying Vaughn needed him as muscle for backup. Vaughn got on the phone saying him and Jasma were at the party when other guys started looking hard and whispering to each other. Vaughn wanted to go back, this time with Big Mike. Mike told detectives he was picked up only 10 minutes after the call. Jasmine was driving a grandfather's silver Oldsmobile when Mike got into the front seat as Vaughn sat in the back. Vaughn started telling him what happened when Vaughn asked him if he was decent. Mike told detectives Vaughn meant was he armed, and Mike told him he had a Glock 40 with 15 to 16 rounds. That's when Vaughn showed him his gun. Mike told detectives they drove back to where the party was at when Vaughn made a call asking if those guys were still out front. The person on the phone told Vaughn not to come because one of the guys had a gun, but Vaughn would reply back saying, that's okay, we got two guns, and he hung up the call. Vaughn and Big Mike exited the vehicle and walked through a vacant lot to LaSalle Street before cutting through a gangway. Mike would tell detectives Vaughn was in the lead while Mike followed, saying neither one of them attempted to conceal their face. As they got to the end of the gangway, Big Mike saw a black male with long dreads wearing an orange shirt. Mike told detectives he later learned from Vaughn it was a man named Tim. Mike was staring as Tim stared back before he turned and ran. Mike told detectives that's when Vaughn chased him to the front of the house 
and opened fire. By the time Mike made it to the front of the house, he saw one victim already laying face down in the grass. Mike saw Vaughn shooting at another guy yelling, why you running? Mike would admit to detectives that's when he started shooting at Tim, firing 15 to 16 shots. Mike told detectives he knew he shot him because he saw him stumbling as he ran. With his gun now empty, Mike turned and ran down the gangway while he could still hear Vaughn firing. Vaughn then came up behind him and eventually down the alley. Mike told detectives he watched King Vaughn run two houses over and fire two more shots at the man that laid in the vacant lot. Mike could see the victim was bleeding from the mouth. That's when they ran back to the car while Jasmine struggled to unlock the car doors. Mike told detectives he yelled at it for locking the doors and would eventually throw his gun in Lake Michigan. He then said he didn't know any of the individuals at the scene. The state attorney's office would charge Big Mike with one count of first degree murder and two attempted murders. King Vaughn was already in prison on a parole violation and the day after Big Mike was charged, Vaughn would be transferred from prison to the interview room. King Vaughn waived his rights and denied any knowledge of the incident. Vaughn denied knowing Jasma and Big Mike but said he knew CJ from grade school and denied being at the birthday party. Shown photos of Jasmine and Mike, Vaughn once again denied knowing them. Marquise Carpenter identified King Vaughn as the person that shot him in the leg and face. He told detectives him and a friend went over to the house to celebrate CJ's birthday. Shortly after, a female and King Vaughn arrived in a silver car. While sitting on the porch, he saw Vaughn having a conversation at the front of the house when Vaughn went to the car, put a gun in his front pocket, and placed his shirt over it. Vaughn and CJ went into the basement of the home, and Marquise overheard Vaughn say, What you doing hanging with these op ass? Marquise told detectives he's a gangster disciple, and later found out Vaughn was a black disciple. Vaughn would stay in the basement for around five minutes before leaving, and that's when Malcolm Stuckey arrived. They were going to play basketball at a park when Marquise noticed all the small kids were being called inside of the house. That's when CJ appeared at the basement door telling them to come to him. Malcolm was by the front lighting a blunt when Marquise heard Tim say, there go them. Marquise then saw Vaughn in the gangway with a black hoodie pulled tight around his face. He saw a black handgun in his hand and another person behind him so they started running. That's when gunfire erupted. He ran to a vacant lot where he was shot in the leg but still made his way into an alley. That's when he saw Vaughn at the other end of the alley and he ran again, looking back to see Vaughn aiming the gun at him when Vaughn fired twice and he was shot in the face. Marquise hit the ground, telling detectives he had a 9mm handgun in his back pocket but thinks it fell out at this time. He'd get back up, running across the street until police arrived. King Vaughn's friend, CJ, would be interviewed by detectives multiple times. He told detectives at the party, someone told him Vaughn called saying he was coming back after leaving. CJ told him to call Vaughn again and tell him not to come. The person would make the call telling Vaughn there was children outside, but Vaughn would say, I'm coming back, get the children in the house. CJ went to warn the others on the porch, but before he could, the gunfire erupted. The man who called King Vaughn would voluntarily do an interview with police, saying he told Vaughn days after the shooting he was bogus for shooting people while CJ's family was out there. Vaughn would reply back saying, they going to come after me now? Vaughn would be officially charged with first degree murder and two attempted murders after being identified by multiple people, including his friend CJ and his co-defendant Big Mike. In fact, Nobody gave a better description than Big Mike, who claimed to see Vaughn start shooting, and by the time Mike made it to the front of the house, Malcolm Stuckey was already dead, implying Vaughn killed him. Mike would then say he saw Vaughn firing at the second victim, who'd later say Vaughn shot him in the face and leg. The only person Mike would admit the shooting was Tim, who was only shot in the foot and was the least wounded victim. Everything else was put on Vaughn. August 13th, 2017. LaVon Everhart, or CJ, was standing outside at 6.52 in the morning when a black vehicle approached. 
A man in a black hooded sweatshirt exited the vehicle, opened fire, and struck CJ twice in the chest. 40 minutes later, CJ would be pronounced dead at the hospital. King Vaughn would be acquitted at trial on all charges in December of 2017 after spending over three years in the Cook County Jail. The reason being, Big Mike recanted his statement and refused to testify against Vaughn at trial. Big Mike would also be acquitted of murdering Malcolm and shooting Marquise, which he originally placed on Vaughn, but Mike would be convicted of shooting Timothy in the foot, which he admitted to. For that, he'd receive a 28-year prison sentence for aggravated battery with the firearm. Vaughn would mention Big Mike in a song titled What's Next. A nigga told on me before he got a longer sense. A nigga told on me before he got a longer sense. I think they gave him 2080 rather talk than this. I think they gave him 2080 rather talk than this. Bitch was the only one that told they killed the other witness. Bitch was the only one that told they killed the other witness. Now Big Mike would appeal his conviction and be released in 2023 making his first appearance on DJU. Not shying away from any question, Big Mike would claim he didn't entirely snitch, but instead was willing to take a chance that Vaughn wasn't. Big Mike wanted to claim self-defense, stating the victims opened fire on him first, to which he returned fire. But apparently DJU is the only place Mike said this. Not once in Mike's appeal did it mention self-defense, and not once in his police interrogation did it mention self-defense. He flat out just told the crazy story of Vaughn calling him for backup, Vaughn popping off the triple shooting, Vaughn dropping Malcolm before dropping Marquise, and Vaughn firing two more times at Marquise laying in the lot. He decided to go with King Vaughn, admitted to participating in the shooting, and when it came to it, told everything that happened to police which would be the definition of snitching that most can agree on. What Big Mike's appeal did highlight was how the police broke him. According to the appeal, Mike was held in the interrogation room for over 30 hours and repeatedly questioned by several detectives. They tell Mike to minimize his role by incriminating Vaughn before Vaughn incriminates him. They implied if Mike spoke with them, the courts would consider his cooperation while determining a more lenient sentence. He'd be given McDonald's and cigarettes by detectives trying to make him comfortable, but they'd also sit inches away from him or stand over him yelling profanities and threatening him. These tactics would lead to Big Mike's confession, but also his appeal because law enforcement obtained his statements through police coercion. But that part of his appeal would be denied as the courts found his statements to be voluntary. Big Mike's appeal win came from the courts reducing his charge of aggravated battery with a firearm to aggravated discharging of a firearm for shooting at Tim. The lesser charge would result in a lesser sentence and therefore his release. So while Big Mike snitched on Vaughn, Mike still had nothing but respect for Vaughn and never spoke down on him during his interview. And the story between the two is just another crazy story out of the city of Chicago. Now, my thoughts on this situation. I saw a lot of people reacting to Big Mike's interview, reading through the appeal. I was able to read through the arrest reports, witness statements. And with the appeal, I'm able to figure out whose name is redacted and blurred out because in the appeal, it actually names it. So it says Marquise is the one that had the silver nine millimeter. And then you read over the arrest report and it's like, okay, this one's Marquise, this one's Tim. You're able to piece the entire thing together. Malcolm Stuckey was not the intended target. They say Malcolm was from the Burbs. He had some involvement with some fucking gang, but he wasn't like that. He worked at the museum, whatever. Malcolm knew one of the GDs that was there. They were supposed to play basketball. One of the GDs was going to help him sell his car, whatever. Malcolm pulls up, lights a blunt, gets shot in the ear. The bullet travels through his fucking head and comes out of his neck. So when Big Mike said Vaughn chased Tim and started shooting, that's where Malcolm got hit because Vaughn was shooting at Tim and Marquise. 
Now, Marquise would get hit in the face by the mouth. Big Mike would say he saw someone laying on the ground bleeding from the mouth. That was Marquise who ended up also getting hit in the leg. I mean, Mike told the entire fucking story. CJ did too. CJ said a lot of shit that would go against Vaughn, along with his mother, along with pretty much everyone at the party. CJ ends up getting killed in 2017. The only other person that cooperated to the same extent as Big Mike is the victim Marquise that got shot that was the GD from Jaro City. He gave up everything. He was like, yeah, Vaughn did this, Vaughn chased me, Vaughn shot me in the face. And Vaughn still got acquitted on all charges. Now, I listened to DJ U's interview with Big Mike giving his version of events and saying he claimed self-defense and Vaughn didn't want to claim that. He wanted to just stay quiet. I didn't find any evidence of that, though. In the appeal, it doesn't mention self-defense and none of the arrest reports or interrogations doesn't mention Big Mike said they got shot at. The GD that got hit, Marquise, his 9mm was found at the scene unfired with 10 rounds in it. Marquise even said, I had a gun on me. I never got the chance to pull it out, and I dropped it when Vaughn shot me in the face. So it's like, he's saying it was self-defense, but nothing else is backing that. Now, the one thing that really stuck out in the interview is how much respect Big Mike still has for Vaughn, especially being the older brother of Wooski, and Wooski and Vaughn had their history. But Big Mike had nothing bad to say about Vaughn, and that says a lot in itself. Now let me know y'all's thoughts and comments in the comments section. Tell me what y'all think about this. I'm gonna also have DJ U's interview pinned in the comments section. Go check out the interview. Listen to what he has to say. It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all, y'all rocking with me. Till next time.